what's going on, everybody? This is Kendall, uh, Wells Legacy Journey. Double dare your money. Check this out. A uh, pretty full, pretty full ledger here. Um, and this is all the transactions um, that happened with Double Dare Your Money. Uh, and really like zero to a thousand, I guess, technically. Um, if you guys remember, we were uh, pushing from zero to a thousand, then a thousand to ten thousand, ten thousand to a hundred thousand. Hit this point, though, where I was like, you know, I'm building too many of these brackets at one time. We are still building out the ten thousand to hundred thousand dollar bracket. Um, in fact, uh, our first tax sale from that bracket is just about to go live, and I'm about to make an update for that one as well. Um, but we decided to put a pause on everything and really focus on the wealth building set that we were in at this moment because I'm trying to juggle so many different things. Um, we are going to circle back to this though. Because once I show you guys and I break down numbers, um, and I'm sure that anybody who's tracking along with us has seen the same numbers in cells, I was a little bit blown away. I was like, oh my goodness, this is absolutely outstanding. Um, but anyways, for now, we're focusing on 10000 to to 100000 um, as we are actually about to push into our own personal six-figure net worth. Woohoo! it's so exciting. Um, and uh, so I want to be able to build that bracket because that's where most of my wealth is going right now. So I want to make sure I have really good momentum in that. Um, because I would, you know, encourage anybody that if you have limited bandwidth, focus on the bracket that you really, um, you know, should be in at this time. And, uh, so with my limited bandwidth, I'm going to focus on that one bracket for now. I am going to go back and build this bracket because this bracket of zero to a thousand is going to get you obviously from, you know, that like hundred ish, we start with $74.58 to a thousand. Then you go 1,000 to 10,000, and then 10,000 is where we kind of start getting into real estate. Big money. Um, so anyways, this is really cool, though. To break it down and just kind of give like a, a timeline of events, we started with $74.58 um, right at the end of 2023, basically the beginning of 2024. In um, it was December that I had deposited, we did our first purchase in January. So it was right as we we're coming over the threshold of the new year. This actually came from Christmas money anyways. Um, and so it was happening basically right there at the beginning of the year, um, is when I came up with this idea for double dare your money. Started with $74.58, um, because that was 0.01%, if I remember correctly, of the, uh, the average take home pay. So the average take home pay was 74580 So we started with $74.58, because that was an amount of money that we could stand to lose and it wouldn't break the bank. Um, but if we continue, if we can multiply from that point, it'd be really exciting. We, you know, and by the way, this PDF, I'm going, I just scanned it. I'm going to um, link to it in the description if you want to be able to uh, actually see the ledger that I put together for how things went. You can see where we bought stuff and sold stuff. So B is for bought, S is for sold. Um, I started marketing at first. I have all sorts of notes on this piece of paper, but um, go check it out. Like I said, it's in the description. We started off with this initial deposit and then we went to Goodwill. And in hindsight, Goodwill was really expensive. We spent almost all of our money there. We were left with $1.87 left from the Goodwill shop um, when we were shopping around there. And uh, looking back, the amount of stuff that we got from Goodwill for spending almost 70, I guess about $72, $73, something like that, we would have been better off starting somewhere else. We didn't know that at the time. So we did everything at Goodwill, bought all this stuff pretty well out of the gate in February, made our first sale. Um, and uh, so we had set up our eBay shop and everything like this from scratch. We made our first sale, um, from this stuff. We sold the colander. We made $16 and 62 cents. So that took us from the dollar 87 that we had left after we purchased everything, pushed us back up to $18 and 49 cents. Um, we started to buy the shipping box, had to buy a tape. Then from there, we started telling family and friends and, you know, Hey, keep your Amazon boxes. We were keeping our Amazon boxes, like any type of shipping box that you got, we said, send them our way. So that we got free boxes and we're have to pay for boxes. We also were buying tape uh, in bundles. And so it, was, um, it started getting cheaper per roll of tape. And uh, mind you, we were doing all of the purchasing of supplies from the fund itself. So uh, we basically kind of got to the point where it was like, I mean, I can we still have, excuse the mess in, in my trailer here. But I mean, I'll show you guys. We're moving right now. That's why it's, that's part of the reason we slowed down uh crap everything's falling off the table but look yeah you can see all those boxes like we 
we started just a collection of boxes, a collection of like packing materials. We had um, like those bubble packing stuff, the cardboard paper, all sorts of stuff um, that we were using to ship these items. And so we just started having like a, a whole collection of this stuff. Um, from there, uh, we also had some Etsy fees and stuff like that. So it took us from 1849. We had the shipping box, the tapes, some fees. And that took us down to uh, $12.59. That's whenever I started YouTubing, like how to do this stuff, how to flip, you know, items. Because like I'm obviously not doing something right. I came across garage sale flipping. And it was like, okay, here's something that like now that I'm hearing the numbers, I'm seeing how this works, this makes a ton of sense. So we started getting into garage sale flipping. Everything from that moment on changed. We haggled with people to get the prices on our purchases down. Um, we went on eBay. We really comped ourselves, our stuff out well. All of the information about how to do that stuff is inside of the training modules for Double Dare Your Money. But we figured out how to comp stuff on eBay. We figured out how to, you know, um, optimize our eBay shop, how to optimize our listings. We figured out how to, what's the stuff that sells the best, um, all sorts of stuff uh, that we figured out as we went through this process. We ended up buying a switch and a bread maker and a printer and a DVD player and this like exercise belt. We bought some toys, calculators, this like phone. Um, we bought some coach purses. We bought some Sperry shoes. We bought a Dooney and Burke wallet. That was kind of like the bulk of everything. And so this timeline is actually only the first four months um, of 2024. And um, a lot of it at the end, we kind of started slowing down because we had the car accident. We had a bunch of other stuff come up in life. Um, we were trying to do double dare your money, you know, from zero to a thousand. We we're also doing 10,000 to a hundred thousand. We had the car accident. Um, we started looking at, you know, potentially selling our house. We sold the farm. Like there were so many things happening at one time. I was like, whoa, okay, we got to pause. So for you guys, it's not an excuse to say, hey, if life gets busy, stop doing double dare your money. What that's saying is make sure that your life is cleared out enough to be able to make this a top priority, number one. Number two, don't try to do multiple categories of double dare your money at the same time. I was doing it because I was trying to build it, all the content out at one time. And I was like, okay, hold on. I need to slow down and take this content build um, slower. And uh, so we're still doing 10,000, 100,000. Like I said, I'm not doing this one. I want to break down these numbers for you though, because- this was actually pretty incredible. So um, we ended up buying stuff, selling stuff. If you go download the uh, PDF or whatever whatever software I put it in for you to build access, it'll be like a Google Drive thing in the description. Um, so you can see it'll basically be like a PDF. That you can see you can see my ledger here of you know us buying stuff, selling stuff, how that ended up working out. And so basically, in my mind, I count when we were at $12.59 after we had sold the colander on Etsy, that was kind of a reset, right? We sold the colander, we bought the box, bought the tape, paid some Etsy fees. Um, we were left $12.59. That's when we reset and we we're like, okay, Goodwill obviously isn't the way to go for this challenge. Um, at least the Goodwills by me, they're really expensive. Maybe thrift stores aren't even the way to go. Where can we get stuff really cheap? That's when we started doing the garage selling. And that's kind of where it was the same idea of buy low, sell high, but we were buying from a different place. There, right? there was a different origin spot. And um, from that point, so we started with $74.58. We ended up hitting this $12.59 low. That's where I would say the low is, right? We had less money than that at times when we deployed capital, but I would say after selling the colander, realizing that nothing else was selling, we had hit this ceiling. It was like, oh crap, we have $12.59 left. Are we about to lose it all on these next investments? Are we gonna be able to take off from here? And we ended up taking off in these garage sales. So, uh, and we ended this challenge. Um, here's here's kind of the sequence of events. So from that $12.59, um, we bought a switch, we, brought, we bought a bread maker, then we sold the switch. So we bought the switch for two bucks, sold it. Um, after all fees and everything paid for, we had we made $16 and one cent. It was really exciting. We bought a printer for $375 that we ended up selling. Where did we sell that printer? We sold that's bought. Uh, we we sold that printer that we bought for $375 for we ended up profiting $13.10. Um we bought a DVD player that we actually, you know, spoiler alert, we, because we were moving and we were just overwhelmed by so many things going on, we ended up just giving away a ton of our inventory. So we ended up probably not even selling half of the stuff that we bought because we didn't want to sit on it because we were moving. We had to get rid of stuff. So we made, we ended up at a profit, of, um, you know, a positive. We started at $74.58, ended at $85.02, all right? Our low was $12.59 before we pivoted. 
Um, so we ended up making money on the whole deal and we gave away probably half the inventory that we had left. So the print, uh, the um, DVD player we gave away, we bought a core belt for seven fifty. sold that core belt, ended up making a profit of $23 and 30 cents after all fees were paid. So we, I guess kind of tripled our money or something on that one. Um, there was a farmer tool we bought. We gave away calculator. We gave away the truck. We gave away this like little phone system. We gave away, we got each of those for like 50 cents. So it was no big deal. That DVD player we bought for three bucks. I thought we were going to be able to sell it for 20. The comps were there for 20. We just didn't have enough time to sit on it. Um, we bought a coach purse, two coach purses and a coach wristlet, each of those for $4.50. We also bought, bought some Sperry shoes for $4.50. Ended up giving the Sperry shoes away. We sold one of the coach purses for uh, a profit of $10.98. No, no, excuse me. That was a Dune and Burke. Um, one of the coach purses for $25.61. And then we sold another coach purse and the wristlet for an even profit of 20 bucks. We also bought a Dune and Burke wallet at one point for $3.99, made a profit on that one of $10.98. We bought those Goodwill, those plates from Goodwill. We originally paid, that hurt. Um, we ended up, we paid, that was sales tax. So for the plates, at six ninety nine each, we paid $27.96. We ended up making back after all the fees, selling that on Goodwill, $11.67. We took a big hit on the plates. The mugs that we got from Goodwill, we ended up having to give away. We did make, we tripled our money on the colander. That was nice. Um, but overall, that Goodwill trip was a pretty massive loss. We get a lot because we lost straight up thirty-two dollars and ninety cents on the flower cups, and then we lost about half or a little over half of what we paid for those plates in order to liquidate them, only making eleven dollars and sixty-seven cents back. Um, but all that said, even with some massive losses out of the gate, you know, as we learned, as we pivoted, as we adjusted, we ended up with a profit of $85.02. I was giving away a whole bunch of inventory, taking a whole bunch of losses out of the gate. We still ended up with a massive profit. Like, guys, I don't know if you see what I'm seeing, but I actually believe in Double Dare Your Money more now than I did when I first started the program. Like, it was like, I think this is something that could work. And now I'm like, holy smokes, or gee whiz, we don't say holy smokes or anything like that. Um, but gee whiz, my kids remind me of that all the time. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to get better. Uh, but gee whiz, like I believe in this so much now. Like for example, the other day, Libby's been wanting a copper pot. I guess she's seen it on Pinterest, something like that. Well, she went to, she stopped in at a thrift store by her house. She got the pot for three bucks, got a lid for it for a dollar. She turned around and she listed the lid for like 15 bucks which is obviously, it was like 10 or 15 bucks, something like that. She's going to end up making off of something. I think she's going to list it for 15, probably make about 10. She's going to be able to pay for the pot and the lid and make money off the whole deal. And um, I know it's just small money, but it's like, it's good to stay in that mental, like that mental place of how can I actually walk away making money when I purchase this thing, right? Especially if I'm using my hard earned money to get it. Now, if I have active investment income or passive investment income, and from that, I have a water pool of fund money, well, I can use that fun money and have do other stuff with it, right? But I want to be as productive as possible with my hard-earned cash that I earn from working my job, right? I need to be able to figure out a way to put that money to work. Um, another thing that actually isn't included in this is Libby ended up, she bought this clock, this like old vintage retro clock. Um, let's see, she sold it on eBay, so I should be able to find the stats on it here. She bought this clock for 25 bucks. She asked me if I wanted to buy it to do as a part of uh, double dare your money. She was like, I think this thing's going to sell for 50 bucks, maybe a little bit more. I looked at the comps and I was like, Oh, I just don't really believe in it. She ended up selling this clock for 55 bucks. And um, she ended up walking away making 45. So she turned $25 into $45 and 91 cents, making a profit another $20. Sure would have looked great here on the paper, but I wasn't going to lie and say I had been a part of that investment from the get go. I didn't really believe in the clock out of the gate. It was 25 bucks. When I was at, it would basically have consumed all my capital at the time she bought it. And I was like, uh, I think there's some other stuff that I'd like to invest in. Um, and so that's what I actually when I ended up getting the coach purses. Kind of at that time, it was when I had $25.65. So it was like, either everything goes to the clock or some stuff goes to these coach purses. And uh, so anyways, the uh, the coach purses won. And um, I just really didn't, I didn't really believe in that clock. Uh, maybe if I had looked and seen, like if I had been at this point where I had 85 bucks and I just needed somewhere to deploy my capital, I'd have been like, ah, what the heck? Like it's worth more than 25. Like I'll get something. 
Um, but at that time, being so low on capital, I was like, I just don't really know because I was like, I don't even think it'll double, which it didn't even double um, on that one. But, you know, oh, it still did pretty darn good. Um, so neither here nor there. Let me just read this blip that I wrote on here. So from here, we decided to move um, sell our house in order to decrease our expenses, increase our cash flow and net worth. The rest of our items, our inventory was given away for the move and nothing else for double dairy money under the $10,000 bracket, which is really what we're doing, like the garage sale flipping and stuff like that, um, will be purchased until our life slows down and we restart. So we are going to come back to double dairy money. I am going to build out the double dairy money, zero to a thousand, thousand to 10,000. Um, we have to slow down. And I think there's actually some other projects that I'd like to work on first for the Wealthy Legacy Journey that are going to help the launch of Double Dare Your Money be a lot more successful. How do I find that target audience and already have them prime for this product when the time comes to release this? So in my mind, there's actually some cool stuff happening behind the scenes. And I'll keep you guys updated at the Wealthy Legacy Journey, you know, the normal podcast. Um, but in my mind, you know, I'm thinking, okay, you know, it's mid-2024 right now. Um, there's this other thing that I, I think I need to work on first, launch that, probably going to launch that somewhere like mid 2025. So if I were to guess double day, your money really could probably launch somewhere like mid 2026, maybe sometime 2027, just depending on how some of the timing works out. But I think this order of doing things actually create a lot more success for double day, your money, the legacy journey and everything as a whole. Um, so I can't wait to launch this to you guys. I guarantee you it's going to come back because here's why. Overall, we had a 14% growth from where we began with our learning curve. So already, there's people who would be very happy to get a 14% annual ROI on their money. So we made 14, even with a lot of struggles, a lot of losses, giving away a whole bunch of inventory, making a whole bunch of mistakes out of the gate. After just a short four months, and really we only bought stuff for three months, and that fourth month we were just selling inventory. Um, and we didn't even send all, sell all the inventory. Like I said, we gave a whole bunch of stuff away. We could have just le left it listed, but we had to clean out the house. Um, we had a 14% growth from where we began with that huge learning curve. Now, here's the crazy part, guys. Once we figured this out, so like I said, kind of had this first phase. We made a lot of mistakes because they're just learning mistakes, learning curves. That's why we start with only $74.58. We don't start with like $74,000 if you only have like $80,000. Right on a project, we want to start with a small amount of money that if you lose it all, it's like, oh, dang, that kind of sucks. But like, I'll do it again. Right. You throw another $74.58 at it so you can learn again, which is what I was planning to do. But we ended up taking off. Our low was $12.59. And then we ended up growing from that low of $12.59 to $85.02. That is a 575% growth from the low to that $85.02 high. Another thing I want to note is that that low was recorded in February of 2024 and the high was recorded in April 2024. So that's only two months. So we did this for four months. The first two months, we made a lot of mistakes, went through a lot of learning curves. The next two months after that, we started seeing absolutely explosive growth. So from February to April, from our low of $12.59, we pivoted from thrift stores to garage sales. Now here's the crazy cool part. I want to calculate that ROI pace with you guys over time. Because you might be like, you know, if you're looking at it and you're like, well, you know, even if you look at like $85 and two cents um, and you're like, well, you know, you started with 70 or you started even at your low of $12.59, $12.59. You made $72.43 for two months. Mm, big whoop, right? Like that's not really all that impressive for two months of work. I mean, I worked my butt off for $72.43. Like some people right now are probably thinking like, Kendall, you're kind of insane. Like, why would you work that hard for $72.43? Why the heck would I work that hard for $72.43? Let me tell you why. Because, and the way I calculated this is you have 80, the, the ROI is I have $85 and two cents. I subtract away, um, the twelve dollars and fifty nine cents, and so that leaves me with a profit of seventy two dollars and forty three cents divided by what I started with is the original twelve dollars and fifty nine cents. That gives a five point seven five two nine seven eight five five, or five hundred seventy five. Technically, it's five hundred seventy five point two nine, or actually point three. It'd be five hundred seventy five point three percent if you rounded it, 
we're just going to say 700, 575% for easy math, but that doesn't include getting our money back. So we made 575% profit plus we got that $12.59 back. Let me show you what happens if you multiply this over time. Remember, we did that in two months from February to April. So it's like mid-February to mid-April, we got that money. Okay, so let's just say that we are at our $85.02. And we are going to multiply that instead of 5.75, we're going to multiply 6.75 because that gives us our original amount that we invest every time back. So I'm 6. 0.75. And we're going to pretend that we do this every two months for an entire year. The number is going to get outrageous, but just stick with me. So the first time from the $85 and two cents, if we could do that again from basically April to June, well, now we'll be sitting at $573. It's so like, okay, made 200 or 400 bucks. Not great, but sure had beat 70 bucks. But let's say we do that again um, for the next two months. Right. So we've done it now. We're, we're at one time. So if we started with eighty five dollars and two cents, we did that once. That's five hundred seventy three dollars and eighty eight cents. Let's do it a second time. Three thousand eight hundred and seventy three dollars and seventy two cents. OK, so now we just made like thirty three hundred bucks in two months. That's starting to become income. Not so shabby, is it? Let's do it a third time. $26,147.64. What in the heck, right? We went from making, we made like 400 bucks and then we made like $3,200 or something like that. And then we went from like $3,800, let's say $4,000 for easy math. We just made an extra 22 grand power of compounding interest over time. Albert Einstein is... Uh, sometimes accredited with the saying of compound interest, the eighth wonder of the world. This is why people, because it keeps growing and growing and growing on top of itself. So it's the third time, right? You have six two two month periods in a year because you have twelve months in a year. You divide that by uh, two, you have six of those sets. So the fourth time you get one hundred seventy six four hundred ninety six one hundred seventy six thousand four hundred ninety six dollars. You do that a fifth time, one point one million, and or maybe that. Somewhere in there, let's do the fifth time, the sixth time, sixth time, maybe is $8 million. I mean, it's insane. I don't think that's going to happen. The reason why is because I can already tell you with the first tax sale we did, it took us two months to get it on the market because we were waiting. We had to wait like two weeks to get the deed back. We had to wait like four months to get the survey back. We had to get it like another week to find a good realtor because the first realtor we we're going to use just ghosted me. We're trying to get it on the market this week. Um, it ended up taking two months. Okay. So it isn't going to be perfectly seamless like this. And also, you know, for us to make, we're going to probably about triple our money on this tax sale. It took us two months just to get to the market. It's probably going to sit on the market for a couple months. So obviously things just don't move that fast at the higher price point. So don't, don't think you're going to make like a million or $8 million in a year, starting with a hundred dollars. I, I don't think it's possible. Maybe it is. Maybe somebody else can tell you how to do it, but I don't think it's possible. But let me show you with this. Let's say we start with our same $74.58, right? And let's just kind of discount off a little bit. Instead of saying that we are going to start um, and off making 6.75%, let's just say we're making 5.75% out of the gate, just to kind of slow things down. We're still going to do this six times, okay? So we're going to time $74.58 times 5.75. First time, $428. Um, oops. Let me do this again. $74 because I want to do something else. I want to make this even harder. I don't want to keep just doing the 5.75. I'm going to I'm going to try to help dial our number down here a little bit. So times 5.75. That gives us $428.83. This time, I'm going to take off a whole 100%. So instead of 5.75, um, we're going to just do 4.75 this next time around on the second one. So times 4.75. So the second time, that gives us $2,000. Third time we do this, I'm going to do times 3.75, $7,600. This time I'm going to do times 2.75, times 2.75, $21,000 in the fourth one. This next time I'm going to do times 1.75, 1.75, not even doubling, 36,000, uh, 36,760, I think that was my fifth time. 
And this last time, let's just say we do 1.5 times 1.5. $55,141.31. So starting with a lower number of $74.58, reducing the amount of compound the first time around, and then cutting that compounding effect down every multiplication after that, you start with $74.58 and you made $55,000. Now I get it. You can say, Kendall, but that's all on paper. No, it's a real deal, bro down to $12.59, and we got our way up to $85.02, and that was with crazy life, car accidents, pumping the brakes on stuff, not being as efficient as possible because life was absolutely insane, and we still did that. Ah, like, imagine if we could have, like, just kept going, and we will, and it kind of hurts my, my mind and my entrepreneur spirit and my heart that we're not keeping going right now, but it's okay. So I'm focusing on my family and I'm focusing on how to build the wealthy legacy journey right and slowly over time. But guys, if you don't see the power of this compounding interest over time, it probably just isn't going to click for you. Okay. But if, if you don't see the power in coming from this low, pivoting, changing, figuring something out, all of a sudden having massive breakthrough to six Xing our money, I, I don't know what to tell you. Like, that's incredible. It's incredible. 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 We're doing the same freaking thing on real estate. We we did the same thing that we did with an extra piece of exercise equipment and a printer that we're doing with two acres over in Palestine right now that I've done with so many different flips that I did with Hudson, which is 13 acres and Alvarado that we bought for 360,000. Final sales price of the whole kit and caboodle is going to be somewhere around like seven, eight hundred thousand dollars when all the lots are sold. Now, granted, that project's going to take like nine months to completion, but <clears throat> excuse me, who over here is going to be complaining about making $400,000 in one year doing one deal that took me less than 40 hours to do start to finish? Like, mind blown, right? This is what we're doing here. This is the power of double dare your money. So with that said, guys, this is not a forever goodbye. This is not stopping double dare your money from zero to a thousand. This is simply a pause. So go check out the PDF sheet. I would say, you know what? If you stumble across this video set and you're like, you know what? I'm not going to wait for Kendall. I'm just going to go ahead and figure this stuff out now. Do it. Let me know. Share with me your success story. I would love to hear you just absolutely killing it in life. That's why I put these videos together. But if you want to wait, um, you're going to probably be waiting a couple years. It's going to be like 2020. I'm guessing probably 2026, 2027 that we really get aggressive about launching Double dare your money. And I hope when we go to launch it, we will have zero to a thousand, a thousand to ten thousand, and ten thousand to a hundred thousand all built behind the scenes. I'll be on my seven figure, uh, building my net worth. Um, I'll, I'm hoping to have crossed the seven figure mark in that point in my journey. Uh, pushing my way to eight, maybe even cross eight. I don't know, with all the different places we have spending between investments and partnerships on some stock stuff and our own personal investments and real estate stuff. And um, what we're doing here at the Wealth of Exit Journey, we'll see where my journey's at. But with that said, guys, get out there and crush it. Figure out where do you want to go? Where are you at right now in relation to that goal? And then what are the steps to get there? And then just say, what's the next right step based on the steps that I just put together? And do that step, right? I will show you guys how to do this, but you don't need me. I didn't have any, I just YouTube this stuff, figured out how to garage sale flip. I never garage sale flip. My family never went garage sale shopping as a kid. Like I didn't know what I was doing. Lily didn't know what she was doing. But praise the Lord, we figured it out. We made a pretty good profit. And we're going to circle back and we're going to do this thing again. We're going to show you guys how to turn $74.58 into $1,000, $10,000, $100,000, $1 million plus being consistent, dedicated, focused, and doubling your money. So with that said, guys, we are pausing. Time out. That's it. Not stopping the game. Just time out. Double day your money, zero to a thousand, while still working on our own personal, right? 10,000 to 100,000. Putting this content together. I got some other really cool stuff in the background. So make sure that you go subscribe to the podcast. Check out the other stuff that we got going. And uh, with that said, I, I hope that you're with us when we fully launch Double Dare Your Money here in just a couple of years. It's awesome doing these last couple of episodes with you. 
I hope that you feel pumped and inspired. Check out our results in the description. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next Double Dare Your Money when the time comes. In the meantime, you guys have a great one. This is another Double Dare Your Money dedicated to you and your own wealth and legacy journey. And I will see you all next episode. Bye, everybody.